Alright, in this video we're going to be doing some more algebraic expressions and we're going to be expanding some more complicated examples. So just to give you a little bit of a recap of what we actually used to expand algebraic expressions, it is called a distributive flow and it tells you that if you have some number a multiplied by some number c plus b inside of brackets, then what you're really doing is you're multiplying a times c first and then you're going to multiply a times b. And if you wanted to go back to this original form, all you would need to do is to find a common factor between those two terms. In this case, the common factor is a, so you know that you can write it in this form. So let's do just that. Let's just expand these following expressions and simplify them. So for here we have 4 plus 6 times x, and then we have minus 3 times 6, which is minus 18. Now we have two constant terms here, so we can add them together. 4 minus 18, that's going to turn into minus 16. Or we can simply write, actually, it's going to be minus 14 here. And we can write in the way 6x minus 14. For this one here, we're going to have 2 minus 3 times x, which is 3x, minus 3 times 2, which is minus 6. And now we're going to have minus 3x, minus 6 plus 2, that's minus 4. So that's going to be our result. Here we have minus, sorry, 4 minus 3x. And then we have minus minus 2, so those two negative signs are going to become positive. So this is going to turn into 6 minus 3x. Here we're going to have 7 plus 2x time and then we're going to have minus 3 times 2 which is minus 6 so this becomes 2x plus 1 or 1 plus 2x whichever way you want to write it generally we write the numerals at the front so we're going to leave it as that in this example here we're going to have 2x so 2 times x then plus 2 times 3 which is 6 for this one we have plus 3 times x which is 3x plus 2 times 3, which is 6. And now we have like terms, so 2x plus 3x, that's 5x. And we have 6 plus 6, which is 12. For this one, we have 2 times 4x, which is 8x, minus 2 times 3, that's minus 6, minus 2 times 3x, which is minus 6x, and minus 2 plus, minus 2 times 5 is minus 10. So we collect the like terms, we have 8x minus 6x, which is 2x, and we have minus 6 minus 10, that becomes minus 16. Now in this one we're going to have minus 3 times 4, that's minus 12x, and minus 3 times 3, that's minus 9, minus 5 times 3, that's minus 15x, and minus times minus, that's plus, so plus 5. So we're going to have minus 3x that results from this. And then minus 9 plus 5, that's minus 4. And for this one, we have minus 4 times 5, that's minus 20. Minus times minus is plus, so that would be 4x. This one here is going to be minus 2x, and then minus times minus is plus. Collect like terms, we have 2x. And then this becomes 20, minus 20 plus 5, which is going to be minus 15. So that's basically how you expand basic algebraic expressions. It's very straightforward. All you do is you multiply the add side term by each of the terms inside the brackets, and then you expand them. Now, the really interesting thing comes when we have, or when we're given problems where we actually have to find something. So... In this particular question, we're going give, to be given some shapes, mainly rectangles, and we have to find the area of rectangles as an expression that contains some pronumerals. So in this case, for example, we know the area of a rectangle is just the product of its sides. So we have base times height. In this case, we have 2 times x plus 1. And then that becomes, if we expand it, that becomes 2x plus 2. So that's going to be the area of this rectangle here. 
for this one here we have x times 2x minus 3 so that's x times 2x minus 3 so this times that is going to be 2x squared because remember we have x to the power of 1 here and here so we add the powers because we have the same base that becomes 2x squared minus 3 times x now let's go into uh, some harder ones so for this one for example we're not given just a rectangle but rather a full rectangle so it's kind of like an O shape so there are many different ways in which we can solve this so one example could be we could actually draw an, an invisible line here so we can split this up into two different rectangles and then find the area of each or we could actually draw that line here and then we could use this portion and that portion or even another method could be we draw a full rectangle and then to find the area of this L shape all we need to do is we find the area of the total rectangle and we just subtract this area so in this case I'm just going to split it up into two sections like this and you can try to do the other two methods that I just showed you and see if you get the same answer so the first thing we need to find out here is the length of these two sides because of course we don't really know what they are so let's have a look at what we're given we're given the base x plus 3 we're given the length of this side length of this side and that side now the length of this side is 2x and the length of this side is x so that means that the length of this remaining side should be the difference between 2x and x so 2x minus x is x so that's how we prove that this side must also be x this side however is a little bit trickier so let's think about the two pieces of information we're given so the total length here is x plus 3 so we can write x plus 3 and we're gonna have to subtract something to that now the only remaining information we have is this two so this should be this little length here is going to be x plus 3 minus 2 and we can simplify this this is going to become x plus 1 okay so now let's call this area 1 so that would be this whole rectangle here and let's find the area of that and then area 2 would be the area of this rectangle here and just to make it clearer we know that this little length here is just going to be x because this length here is x so let's find the area 1 okay actually let me just write it like this so it doesn't look that confusing area 1 is going to be x times x plus 1 so x times x plus 1 we can expand this so x times x is x to the power of 2 plus x times 1 which is x then for the second area we have x plus 3 times x so x times x plus 3 and that's going to be equal to x squared plus 3x and now if we add the two areas together the total area would be a1 plus a2 so we're going to have x squared, we have this plus that, that becomes 2x squared, and we have x plus 3x, which becomes uh, 4x. And that's our final answer. So that's the total area of that L shape we have there. Now, question D is a little bit similar, but it's um, we need to find the information that is missing. So in this case, we need to be a little bit more clever about how we define this problem so once again we could split it up into two sections but I'm actually going to use a different approach this time just to show you some variety so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a full rectangle here and then to get the area of this L shape I'm just gonna subtract the area of this little rectangle here now the piece of information we're missing we know this length is X but we don't know what this is but if you look at here we have this little line here which means that this side has the same length as this side over here so if we try to think about it this side here is x this side here is 2 and if we add this plus that we should get that side so this side should actually be x plus 2 and if this side according to this figure here since this indicates they have the same length then this side here should also be x plus 2 all right so now okay so how do we find this one well this side here is going to be 10 minus this whole thing here so that's going to be 10 minus 
x plus 2, which is equal to 10 minus x minus 2, which becomes 8 minus x. So now we have all we need to work with. So in order to find the area of this uh, little L shape here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the total area of this rectangle and subtract this little area here. So I'm going to call this one area 1. So area 1 is going to be the following. So let me just call this one 2. Area 1 is x plus 2 times x or x times x plus 2. We can expand that to half x squared plus 2x. And now for to find area 2, we actually need to find the total area. So let's call it area total of that rectangle. And it's going to be the following. So we have 10, which is the total base, and the height is x plus 2. So we have 10 times x plus 2, which becomes 10x plus 20. And now the area of the L shape, which is what we want to find, is going to be total area minus the area of this little rectangle, A1. So we're going to have 10x plus 20 minus x squared minus 2x. And now we can simplify this even further and say, okay, this is going to be 8x minus x squared plus 20. And that's going to be the total area of that L shape that we have there. And you could have, you could pretty much try these two questions using different methods and check that you get the same answer. You should actually get the same answer. So hopefully this shows you how you can apply some of these expanding algebraic expression properties to solve more complicated problems in algebra.